Hi, so we have set up our data and we set up it conditionally. If a valid date to rooms doesn't pass, then we set it up. Otherwise, we know the date is good, so we continue with our test. And that certainly makes the test faster. But there is one other place where we always recreate the same data again and again. So this is the user setup. Notice that before I can visit the room, I have to log in. But to log in, I need the user information. To create that user information, I need to register. So every user is registered via API method. Now, this is fast, no doubt. It doesn't go through UI to log in through a form. It executes a side request command. And let's, so it registers the user. Now, this is a unique user for this test. And then it logs in the user. Okay. And uh, right here, then it logs in the user and then we can visit the page. Now, it's good. Notice first test, create one user, and second test, create another user. What if we could use data session to actually stop recreating the user and only log it in? Okay, let's see how we can do this. First of all, you can use multiple data sessions for each different uh, piece of data. So in this case, we'll have a uh, Sci data session user. And let's say setup user and validate user. Okay. Now, and every time we set up a user and it passes validation, so it doesn't have, right? Every time we do that, we need to take that, that particular user, assuming we yield it, right? And we need to log in. And I already have this method called login via API in my utils. Okay, so we need to write setup user. So let's say function. Now we can take the same logic from utils and we can say, let's say this one. And just move it into setup. And of course, we can reuse as much code, but right now I'm doing everything here so it's all visible and you can see it. Okay, so Sci request, and then we need to return the actual user object. Now we need to validate. So we're getting this object, right? Hopefully, either from setup user or from, you know, memory cache. And how do we validate it? Well, the one thing I came up with was to actually try, um, you know, going to the, through the login, right, and looking at what it returns. Because if we're doing the login, it redirects, and side request follows the redirects automatically. So if we redirect and we see the data side rooms, we know we are on a page right here. We actually see this, uh, you know, list of rooms. Otherwise, we'll go back to the login, right? If I go to logout, I'll get right here without that element. So we're literally looking at the HTML returned by the login call. And if it contains room, then you know we are good. Okay, so let's see how this works. Okay, random is not defined. Where do we use random? Oh, we use it right here. So we can say Cypress underscore random. Okay, so let's see what happened here. So first, we validate the rooms, and then we're trying to set up a data session for the user. If it's the first time for session user, right, we create a user, and we logged in, and now, actually, we can remove this calls, right? We no longer need them. Let's try this again. Okay. So, data rooms are still valid, data session user. We fetched, and let's look at the result of this request, right? So, this was request to slash login. And this is the body of HTML. And notice you can kind of see that there are rooms where I see a room list and so on. So we know that our login redirected to the rooms page. So that means the user is still valid, still can log in. And so we just log it in, right? And now this sets the cookie for our session and we are good to go. Now, then we visit the rooms, we're logged in and, and everything is good. And the next test, still the same thing. The user and the room sessions are good, so we can immediately visit that particular uh, room. And just for the, you know, our sake, is say, uh, uh, shows the username, right? So the username, uh, let's say we visit the rooms. Okay. So when we visit the rooms, we see the username right there. Let's look at the selector, it's user info. So the user info element with a class should have this 
user, right, which is the name of the session. And the, what do we have there? We have whatever this setup yields. So this user, username. Perfect. So we see the right username. So this is a way to use multiple side data session calls to set up different pieces of data, one for rooms, one for the user, and then use separate calls to log in the user. Now, this call could potentially be replaced with size session, but for now, this is good enough.